Hey guys, welcome back to Pompoween. It's the second to last day. If you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, this entire month I've been posting one video a day. So if this is your first video, there are 29 other videos for you to catch up on. It's a lot of videos, but I promise they're good. So, also if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you're not new here, welcome back. Today, as you can see, I've got my brow covered. I'm wearing little, little shiny scales because we're doing something special. I didn't make it super obvious that I wanted to do all the Universal Studio monsters, but I have done them. I did the werewolf. I did the mummy. I didn't do Dracula per se, but I did a vampire. Didn't do Frankenstein, but I did his bride. And now I'm doing the creature from the Black Lagoon, as you probably already saw from the title of this video. I'm going to jump into the makeup and then talk a little bit about the look while I'm doing it so that this video isn't two hours long. My brows aren't super dry yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the base. And I'm gonna be using the Snazaru face paint in the color pale green. And this is a water activated face paint, so you just need a few drops of water and it's activated and then you can use it to paint. And you want the consistency to be pretty thick. So as I was saying about the Universal Monsters, when I first started planning out my Halloween looks, I decided I wanted to do the monsters and the creature was included and then as time went by I saw that I wasn't gonna have time to make little gills and so I had removed him from my list of looks that I was gonna do. And then one night while browsing Instagram, I saw that Beastly Makeup had just launched some new latex ears that she was making and that included some little thin ones. And so I immediately bought them and I'm only just filming this now, <laughs> so you know. But I'm happy I'm getting to do this look. Some people actually requested it, so I had planned on doing him all along. Or, actually this is a her, I'm turning it into a female creature. And the creature was androgynous anyway, so I feel like it could be a him or a her. Maybe the creature doesn't have a gender. Who knows? So the thing with face paint is that you're gonna wanna do more than one layer, and you want a pretty thick consistency of paint, you don't want it to be super watery, and you don't want your brush to be super wet either. One thing I like to do as the paint is kind of drying down, I go back over it to remove the brush marks. Also, I would like to point out that I don't really know where this look is going. I kind of planned it out, but I'm still not 100% sure what I want to do. Um, this was one of the rare looks where I did actually sketch it out beforehand, but... I still don't know if I'm happy with what I sketched out. So let's talk a little bit about the history of the creature from the Black Lagoon while we're here. I've actually never watched the movie, but I do know about some of the history involving the makeup. And it's a really cool but also really sad story because the designer of the creature mask was Millicent Patrick and she was a woman, obviously, and she used to be an illustrator for Disney. So that's the awesome part of the story. It was designed by a woman. The sad part of the story is that Bud Westmore took credit for that makeup for over 50 years. So he was also the makeup artist on that movie, but he himself did not design the mask, but he still took credit for it for 50 years. <sighs> so yeah, it's pretty shitty. But unfortunately, that's the way the world works. Women get erased from history all the time. Okay, see, now I'm starting to get a patch right here. I'm going to wait for that to dry so I can fix that up a little bit. And you usually get patches when your brush is too wet or if there's already, like, too much product in that area. Okay, so now that this area is dry, I'm going in with very little water to activate the product and just kind of lightly going over that area. Okay, now that I look sufficiently weird, I'm gonna go in and start my highlights. For that, I'm gonna mix the Mayron Clown White Light with the NYX SFX Cream in yellow because I don't want this to look like my Frankenstein's Bride. I want this to pull more towards yellow green than blue green. So you just want this really like pale yellow and I'm gonna be using a sponge, but I'm not gonna dampen it. Otherwise, it's going to lift all the face paint because if you have a wet sponge, it's going to reactivate the paint and I'm gonna take it off. So I'm just gonna 
the creature has very interesting facial features and I kind of want to mimic them. So I'm going to want to emphasize like the brow bone and the cheekbone. It is lifting up a little bit of the base. It's not too bad. And then there's also going to be like powder and stuff over this. So I'm not too worried. It is lifting quite a lot actually. It usually doesn't happen. So I don't know what's going on. I kind of wanted to use this yellow as a blush, so in the sketch that I made, I brought it kind of like the little sunburnt effect, but with yellow around the eyes too. But it is lifting up my base quite a lot, which is getting me a little bit worried. This image is looking really, really bright. Okay, I think that's better. You can see more of the detail. I typically really like doing the face paint plus cream highlight and contour combo, but this one isn't working out for me all that well. I'm going to have to do a lot of correction with powder, but the problem is I don't have any eyeshadow that's that color. I don't think anyway. I'm going to have to like hunt for one. I'm going to hunt for an eyeshadow that's this color. Okay, the closest thing I have is this yellow from the BH Cosmetics Take Me Back to Brazil palette, but it's really not pigmented like at all, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to use it on a pretty dense brush. Oh, that shows up like really yellow. Hmm, that's interesting because that's like the palest one I have. Okay, you know what? Let me go in with the Lunatic Cosmetics Volume 1 palette. And there's this like really pale, pale yellow. It's almost white. I'm gonna pack that on top instead. I feel like this one is the exact color. I should have just used this one. <laughs> but it's fine. You guys said that you like watching my makeup in real time. This way you get to see all my mistakes. Okay, so now I've set it all. I'm gonna try to go in with eyeshadow for my contour without doing a cream contour. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna go in with the shade Milda from the Strobe Cosmetics Divinity palette. So the creature has like super chiseled cheekbones. So we're gonna go for that as well. But I wanna keep the shape, kind of following the shape of the highlight. This is a great contour color for this base color. Who would have thought? Not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm kind of just patting on the product so I can get a really intense pigmentation and then just blending it out. Then I'm going to do a little bit of that right here. But I think I'm going to go for a really graphic eye, which isn't something I do very often. I'm just applying this really... I feel like it's sticking a little bit, so I'm going to go in with the RCMA No Color Powder because I don't want that to stick. I want to have a pretty smooth blend. So whenever you feel your brush tugging on something or sticking to something, that is not what you want, like, ever. And so all you have to do is just powder it down and you're good to go. I'm going to bring that contour up on my temples as well. And the wig I'm gonna wear has bangs, so I'm not too worried about the forehead. That's why it's like all patchy here, but don't really care. Okay, so I'm also gonna contour. Oh, that was my microphone. Still not used to having it here, as you can probably tell. It might take me a while. I'm also going to contour right under my bottom lip and my chin as well. Still don't know what I'm doing with this look. It usually only clicks towards the end when it's something like this where I really have no idea what I'm doing. It's like with the pumpkin look that I did, I had no idea what I was gonna do and it took me way longer than it should have because I just didn't know what I was gonna do <laughs> with the look. So hopefully today isn't one of those days. I think I'm going to use the same color for the eyes, and I'm going to start mapping the eyes out. So I'm trying to mimic the shape of the creature's kind of brow bone area. I'm using a pencil brush so that I could be kind of precise with my application. I'm using the very tip of the brush. I'm just 
curving it and then doing kind of an S shape which is probably going to be hidden which is probably going to be hidden by the hair anyway but and then bringing that onto my crease I am going to bring that into the inner part of the crease as well I'm also going to take that color on an even smaller pencil brush and I'm going to apply it right under my eyeball and let me explain the eyeball, you see how it comes down all the way to here? Like if I poke this, this is like the bottom of my eyeball. So I'm going to apply that right under my eyeball to create a kind of like bag under my eye. And just kind of blending out that line. And I'm also going to join it with this other line I created. See? Under eye bag. I don't know, I just think this looks pretty amphibious. And I don't think I'm going to apply any eyeshadow to the lid. I kind of like it the way it is because it makes the eye seem rounder. It's kind of weirding me out how graphic this is, how I'm not blending this out. But hey, sometimes it's good to try out new things, right? I'm contemplating doing the lines that he has down the nose. And that would mean joining this right here. But I'm scared of it looking like a unibrow, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. There's actually the teeny tiniest brush. It's a little angled brush by Moda. I'm going to use that to draw the little line. Still using Milda from the Divinity palette. It's kind of weird, and I'm kind of here for it. I'm going to take that little teeny tiny pencil brush and just kind of blend around the edges. Now I want to do a few more of these. I don't know if I'm going to do as many as he has. I think I might do like a simplified version of it. But before I do that, I'm going to take the Creepy Cute palette by Strobe and I'm taking the color Take a Hint. It should be called Take a Mint because it's green. Shouldn't it? Anyway, I'm going to take that color and apply it to the tip of my nose. Doing like a little little contour. Should I do the button nose? Oh no, that lifted the paint a little bit. This paint is just not cooperating with me. It might be my skin. Might be the skincare that I have underneath. That'll happen where a moisturizer or whatever or primer that you used will cause the makeup to lift. And it sucks, but it happens. That's why it's important to know your products and test out what works with what. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. And do just like a hint of a button nose. Should I do more lines on my face? Maybe yes. I feel like the answer is yes. I'm just kind of keeping this parallel with the first one that I drew. I know I said I was going to do a cute version of the creature, but I don't know how cute this is going to look in the end. Blurring out the outer edges. And I kind of want to create volume, so I'm going to shade a little bit here on the sides of the nose and leave the center clear. I look like a little alien right now, but I have faith. I have faith in this look. Then I'm gonna do another one that kind of connects to my eye bags. I also kind of look like a snake right now, but I guess that's fine because apparently in the original design he was supposed to look more like an eel and have more of a feminine body. Also, I don't know why I keep calling it he. Anyway, the creature was supposed to have a more feminine eel-like body. And I imagine face as well. So, I don't know. Eels are kind of like snakes, right? Eels have really weird faces, though. I love snakes, and I've always wanted to have one, but the thing is, I don't think I'd ever be able to feed it. Even though I know you can feed them, like, frozen mice, I'd still have to feed it frozen mice. Like, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I'm going to take that and shade the outer portion as well. kind of just want to make it seem like these are little, like, bumps. This is fun. This feels like I'm doing an alien makeup. And a lot of people requested for me to do an alien makeup, and I really wanted to, but I just didn't have any ideas for it, to be honest. And so that's why I didn't include it in my 31 days. But since a lot of people requested it, I might do it afterwards. I'm just waiting for inspiration, you know? 
And this is kind of inspiring me to try out new shapes and stuff. Because these shapes are pretty weird. I think I might do one more above that. Honestly, I should have done a cream base for this look. It would be a lot easier to do the detail work I'm doing um, with an eyeshadow. Because eyeshadow doesn't go on really well onto face paint. But lesson learned, I guess. So I would have a much smoother kind of application if this were all cream that was set with powder. I feel like a little snake. You know what? I actually don't like the shape of this top one. So I'm going to try to erase it using a little bit of face paint. Might have to do two layers or three, but I definitely want to change that shape to mimic the creatures a bit more. So I did two layers of the face paint, then I powdered it, and now I am stacking the pale eyeshadow on top. Oh, and this right here is a little wet patch of face paint, so ignore that. Now, I'm going to try to mimic the shape of his, so I'm going to make it closer to this in the center, and then kind of bring it upwards like that, so it mimics more the shape of his brow. It's brow. God damn it. So now that I've done all these lines on my face, it looks nothing like my initial sketch that I did. I had not planned on doing any of this, so I don't know how to feel right now. My initial makeup idea was super, super simple, super, super easy. And I feel like this has taken on a mind of its own. And I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know if I like this at all. But hey, I started it, now I gotta finish it, right? Now I just have to go in and shade all the lines to give them volume. This is an interesting one. And I'm gonna take the take a hint from Creepy Cute again. Just add that to where I'm, whoa, that is really strong. <laughs> Whoops. That is way stronger than I thought it was going to be. Add that here as well. Shade here too. Gonna add this color here as well. And kind of join it with this. Kind of softens things out a little bit. I'm actually going to take that color on this bigger brush. That highlight is like really really harsh so I'm trying to like take it down a little bit. So I'm applying it over the highlight. This is actually making it look nicer. It's giving it a more green tone rather than the ashy kind of white. Oh yeah I like that better. Way better. See? See? Look at that. Yeah, I think the contrast was just too stark so this is definitely making me like it a little bit more. Applying this color over the contour as well, so that everything kind of has that lime tone to it. I do kind of look like a little alien. Okay, so I'm actually going to start shading around my mouth with that lime green as well. And I was going to do green lips, but I kind of like it when he has the red lips as well. I don't know, I'm torn on that still. I'm quite torn. But I do know I'm going to really extend my lip shape and widen my mouth. So I kind of think I need to do something to incorporate like my nose into this whole thing. Because right now I just have like a normal human nose. Let me see if I can do anything. Definitely look like a little snake now. But not too mad at it. Now I'm just shading... I feel like I started to do this and then got distracted with another part of the makeup. I tend to do that a lot. Yeah, I think I'm getting frustrated because I should have used a cream base because like these shadows right here aren't blending the way they're supposed to, rather the way I want them to. So that's kind of frustrating. I'm going to pretend that's not happening. I think I'm going to start mapping out the mouth. I'm like trying to keep my spirits up, so I just put on the little fins, and I actually really like it with the fins. So that gives me hope that I might be on the right path somehow. So let's just keep on keeping on. So right now I'm doing some more intense shading around these lines using the Take a Hint eyeshadow. 
and it's making me hate it less. I feel like the fins gave me a kind of fresh breath of hope for this look. I know that may sound really dramatic, but I don't know, it's just really frustrating when you're doing something and you don't think that it looks good and you don't think it's gonna come out looking good. And it's especially frustrating because I only have this one shot of doing it. It's like, I can't refilm this, this needs to go up tomorrow. I've actually never refilmed anything because I didn't like it. I always try to make a look work. When I don't like it, I try to change it enough that I'll start to like it. It's just like really good exercise, I think, artistically. Sometimes we just have those blocks, you know, and I feel like that happens for everyone, you know. Everyone gets artist block once in a while, like that's, it happens. Like I honestly felt like I had artist block all of last year and beginning of this year. I felt like I didn't know what to do. I didn't feel like doing any looks for a long time. I don't know, I was just really frustrated and I also had a lot going on in my life so I think that definitely contributed to that. But I felt very stuck and then when I finally felt unstuck was when I started producing more videos for YouTube and being more consistent about it and it was such a good feeling that it kept me kind of, it kept pushing me forward and that's kind of why I decided to do 31 Days of Halloween because I just felt motivated to create and I still do and I'm kind of riding the wave while it's here because you never know when that's gonna go away and I hope it doesn't for a while. Ah, oh, that doesn't suck so bad. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm just basically softening all the lines, going with the lime green over them. I think that's really benefiting this look. Like, what was frustrating me before is that I couldn't see how I was going to make it look cute. And now I think it's starting to look cute again. So I can see myself doing, like, maybe a rosy cheek or some freckles. Yeah, I don't hate that now, even though it looks like a mask. So I have to find a way of incorporating some of that down here. Because I don't want it to look like a mask. So I kind of feel that the only way of bringing this down is just to do another, like, thingy right here. Okay, why is this making me think of the female gremlin? I still have never watched Gremlins 2, I've only watched Gremlins 1. But I have watched the Key and Peel sketch about Gremlins 2, and it kind of tells me all I need to know about the movie. If you've never seen that sketch, it's hilarious. Okay, now I'm gonna take the Divinity palette. I'm gonna take Milda again, and I'm just gonna kind of continue that line and darken this area up a little bit. Ah, it's a wig. So I decided to put on the wig just so I could kind of see where this is going and see the direction I want to take this in, and it is a much more blue-based green than my makeup. I think that's fine. I might make the part around the eye more blue based as well, but I kind of like the idea of having a red or like a non-green lip situation here. But first I'm gonna finish kind of defining that line. I still haven't gone to a single pumpkin patch and that makes me so sad. I haven't had time though. I guess we can always go next month. I think I might shade in these lines a little bit more with Basta, which is like a dark, it looks like a gray, but it's more like a really dark mauve. I might shade in some of these lines with that just to give more depth to them. Kind of afraid that if I do the red lips, I'm really going to look like the female gremlin. I don't know how to feel about that. Might do pink lips instead, like light pink, like this. I really don't want to look like a gremlin. <laughs> I do think I have to make my cheekbone contours darker though. It's like they looked really dark before, but then I put on the wig and the wig is so dark that it makes them not look dark at all. That's why I like putting on the wig when I'm not sure of where to go with the look. It's like if you see what the final image is going to look like, it makes it easier to make certain choices. So I can't make up my mind for a lip color. 
probably been swatching them for the last 10 minutes and putting my hand up to my face. I'm leaning towards this one or like an orange or I kind of really like this pink one just because I never use pink. Like I hate pink lipstick on myself and this one is so bright. Mm, I don't know what to do. What do I do? Ooh, this one with an orange center might be nice. <gasps> yeah so this as an outline with an orange center I think I'm gonna try that and I'm gonna try to round out the top lip a lot more than I usually do to try to mimic his lip shape the lipstick kind of mixed in with a face paint so it's a lot lighter than it normally is I'm not really digging that I really wanted to darken up those edges Okay, so I'm actually mixing two colors from Incubulation. It's Ariel and Sienna, and it's giving me a kind of olive green. I think it's just dark enough. Oh yeah, that's really nice. That's what I needed. I'm just really extending the outer corners. I'm also going to outline my bottom lip and I'm going to be extending the outer corners of that as well. Now I'm going to go in with the color Cleo by Incavalation and I'm going to apply that right to the center. Mm. Do I hate that? I don't know how I feel about that. No, I don't hate it, but I also don't think it's quite the right color. Let me try putting some Sienna right smack in the middle. I think that's more like a swampy color. I kind of just want to try out the Sienna by itself without that warm orangey base. Yeah, I think I like that. And it wasn't even one of the colors that I was considering. Uh, that is the third time I've knocked down this microphone. Okay, I'm gonna mix that in. I think I have to use a little bit of Black Moon Cider in the center. And you guys know how much it pains me to use this lipstick because it was limited edition. <laughs> I'm applying that just to the center. So I'm gonna go in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Subculture Palette and I think I'm gonna go in with the shade Axis because it's a bluish toned green and it is really dark. So I'm just gonna apply that around my eyes pretty much on top of the other eyeshadow i know i said i wasn't gonna smoke this out but i kind of really want to so i'm gonna take that color on my little fluffy brush and just smoking out this outer kind of tail blending it down so that it kind of helps with that contour a little bit and then bringing that also down here a little bit so this just kind of becomes one thing taking that color on the pencil brush just applying it to the outer corners of my lips now I'm gonna be bold and try something that I really hope works out I'm gonna go in with the sugar pill butter cupcake eyeshadow this yellow right here I'm going to use it as blush I'm just patting that on where I would normally apply blush. I might add some orange to that. I'm also going to go in with Flame Point. Yeah, there we go. And I'm patting this onto my contour as well. Kind of just mixing those colors together. Now I don't want to make this look super colorful, but I did want to add some sort of color to the cheeks. Oh, why does this look so hard? Yeah, I don't know if I can go back from doing this though. Let me try this sugar pill color. Okay, that's kind of muted that down a little bit. But you still kind of get that blush effect. I just didn't want it to get super, super colorful. And I'm also applying that yellow right here. So initially I was going for a cute version of the creature, but I don't think this looks very cute. I just think this looks kind of Cirque du Soleil-ish. I kind of wanted to add the yellow to the lids. 
I'm just using my finger and just patting it right in the center of my lid. And I'm taking the pale yellow and applying it to the very, very center. Okay, so I'm taking that pale yellow and applying it to the center of my bottom lid as well. I feel like I need to highlight I don't have any highlights, but I don't think I'm going to use a shadow for this. I think I'm going to go in with cream. But the only cream I have, but the only cream would be the white one. Let me think this through. Okay, so I'm going to risk something. And I feel like this entire look has been me taking risks. I don't know if they're paying off. I'm gonna go in with the Clown White Light so I can do some highlights. I'm using a lip brush. Okay, that works. But I'm being very careful so that I don't lift any product that's underneath since that's been happening a lot with this look. Okay, this definitely has more Cirque du Soleil vibes than it does like a cute creature vibe, but that's fine changing things up here. Not intentionally, but we're changing things up. So I'm basically going along all the bottom edges of the, I don't know what to call these, on the face, the grooves. Definitely want to highlight right here. I love it how highlights kind of make a look. Like, highlights change a look completely whenever you're doing something like this, you know, that's more like fantasy or, you know. I'm highlighting right above the top lip as well. Kinda wanna add some to my lips. Okay, now that really makes me look like a painting. <laughs> I'm also gonna apply it to my inner corners of my eyes, to the very center of my lid. Wow, I have been wearing these contacts for far too long. I feel like I'm like 90% there. There's just like one thing missing. I think I'm going to paint my fins while I decide what that one thing is. I'm using the Mayron Paradise paint in the color Mango. I'm just applying it to kind of in between the little lines. Then I'm going to take the Snazaru Pale Green and I'm going to paint these guys. Then I'm taking the eyeshadow from the Subculture palette and dusting that on the tips as well. I'm gonna bring it in. I'm also gonna take the green from the Creepy Cute palette and use that to shade as well towards the center. That's my little ear. So then I'm taking the Mayron Clown White Light and doing some it's hard to do in this position. Oh my god, this is really hard. That's going to be that. Just basically a continuation of what's happening on my face. Okay, I know I promised freckles, so I'm going to deliver. I'm going to go in with the NYX Vivid Brights Liner in the color Vivid Envy. I think this will kind of help give it a more amphibious vibe. I think I'm going to do some here close to the eye. And I'm making them bigger closer to the eye and kind of getting smaller as it gets further away. Doing something like this is good because it just adds a little bit of texture to a look that's otherwise really like smooth. So this just breaks it up a little bit and adds a little bit more interest to the look. Okay, freckles are done, ears are on. I'm going to go in and line my waterline with the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk. That's just going to make my eyes look extra extra big. I'm gonna take that color and apply it right on my lash line. Right under here too. Then I'm also taking that color onto my top lash line and I think that's it. I just tried on a few lashes and I didn't like any of them so I think I'm not gonna do anything to my lashes because they would just hide everything I've got going on around the eyes. You know, I might add something to the neck. So I think I might do that and then call it a day. Just taking axis. Take a hint. Shading around that. And back in with Melda. Shade that a little bit more. I know that like the hair is in the way and you can't see much, but 
it's in my way too and I can't see much either. Then I'm going to take the clown white so I can highlight in between them and above and below. So I think that's the look done. I think. Honestly, I'm going to leave it at that. Ooh, should I put a glossy lip? Ooh, glossy lip. Gonna go in with the LA Girl Gloss Topper in clear. I like the white highlights when there wasn't a gloss, but now that there is a gloss, I don't like them. So I have to remove one or the other. So I'm thinking I'm gonna remove the white highlights. I think the gloss makes more sense for the creature. I'm like 100% sure that you can see me getting progressively tired as the video goes on and I apologize if my energy is kind of low right now. I didn't think I was going to be doing this makeup for this long. I've been doing this for over five hours so yeah. <laughs> and this one is really really different. It's way different than I thought it would be. I hope you guys like it. I don't know. I feel like I don't know, but I don't hate it because in the beginning I was hating it. I don't hate it. So there's that. Yeah, let me know what you thought of this video. I know it's probably a weird one since I'm basically experimenting throughout the entire video. Let me know what you thought. Do you like seeing my thought process as I mess up and then try something else? Is that something that you guys enjoy watching? Do you guys like to see me testing out different things or do you just want to see like the final result and transformation? Let me know down below. And tomorrow is the last Halloween video. I know that everyone's super excited for it. I know I am too. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's not going to be like a crazy 12 hour body painting because everyone's going to be out partying. Everyone's going to be out trick or treating. So I just want to keep it short and sweet so that everyone can just go and enjoy Halloween. But it's going to be good. Just because it isn't complicated doesn't mean it's not good. All right, so be sure to come back tomorrow for my last Pompaween video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye!